من الله في شيء إلا أن تتقوا منهم تقام ويحذركم الله نفسا وإلى الله المصير قل إن تخفوا ما في صدوركم أو تبدوا والله رؤوف بالعباد قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم قل أطيعوا الله والرسول فإن تولوا فإن الله لا يحب الكافرين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر إلى الذين أوتوا نصيبا من الكتاب يدعون إلى كتاب الله يدعون إلى كتاب الله ليحكم بينهم ثم يتولى فريق منهم وهم ذلك بأنهم قالوا لن تمسنا النار إلا أياما معدودات وغرهم في دينهم ما كانوا يفترون فكيف إذا جمعناهم ليوم لا ريب فيه
وتخرج الحي من الم... Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I have, yeah, I, I hope that you have had a good Eid. Eid Mubarak. Adha Mubarak for every one of you. It's nice to meet you once more again. I do love every one of you. I do respect every one of you. I hope that every one of you is feeling well. I want to make sure whether everybody is hearing me. I have no response, Abdullah. Is everybody hearing me? Yes, yes. Nice, nice. Okay, okay, Osman. Okay. Today we are exploring Shakespearean, Shakespearean idea of a tragedy with a special reference to Hamlet. What is Shakespearean concept or conception of a tragedy? Because we have a Greek conception of a tragedy and we have Shakespearean conception of tragedy. A Shakespearean tragedy is defined as a story of exceptional calamity, calamity disaster, exceptional big, leading to the death of a man, namely the tragic hero, the man occupying a high position or a status, is a high ranking person. In and the tragic hero, tragic hero was a king. The Greek the tragic hero was a king. But with Shakespeare, here a prince, not a king. A tragedy by Shakespeare is concerned principally mainly with one man and is a tale of suffering. Is a tale of suffering and misfortune. A tale story of suffering and misfortune leading to his death, to this man's death, besides other people. The hero must be a man holding a lofty position, high position, and commanding respect, commanding the respect of the audience and the readership. Of course, and the suffering or misf misfortune must be of an exceptional or extra extraordinary kind as to produce a strong tragic feelings, namely pity oh, and terror. But a tragedy is a respectable man, is a respectable man with whom we can sympathize. The, his calamity is exceptional, is extraordinary, ليست أمرا طبيعيا أو سهلا. Hamlet is primarily a, the tragedy of Hamlet. Hamlet the play, هذه Hamlet the play. This means Hamlet the play. When Hamlet is written in italics, means we are speaking about Hamlet the play. Hamlet here, Hamlet the character. أنا بحبك له. Hamlet the character. The Prince of Denmark. Hamlet was a well-known, honored, and well-beloved figure in the political life of his country at the time at which the incidents of the play were supposed to, ha to have taken place. To have taken place, ya ulad, ya banan, had a more perfect infinitive. To have taken place. The incidents of this play are supposed to have taken place. هذا بسموه بالتو زائد الهام زائد التصريف الثالث هذا بسموه perfect infinitive. The play depicts portrays the mental suffering and torture which Hamlet endures 
as a result of what he rightly considers to be the shameful conduct of his mother. In remarrying within two months of her first husband's death, a woman, even now a woman who, even in our Palestinian heritage, a woman can't marry, is not allowed to marry within two months of her husband's death, at least three or four times, four, 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 four months. Samuel Udda. And what adds to the calamity is that Hamlet's mother marries a man who is very inferior to her ex-husband. أقل بكثير من زوجها السابق. Yes, yes. How weary, tiresome, he says, stale, Muffin, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. These two lines are taken from Act 1, Scene 2. This is what we call a soliloquy, al shakhsiya. Here, Hamlet contrasts or compares between his father, King Hamlet, and Claudius, the present king, his uncle. He says that his father is very much bigger than Claudius, is much better than Claudius, and is not compared to Claudius in any way. The conduct of his mother leads him to this generalization. Leach generalization, frailty thy name is woman. I adopt. أنت إمرأة المرأة هي الضعف woman a woman is an incarnation of frailty weakness. Hamlet's mean for Hamlet for Hamlet this is well justified. This is well justified. Hamlet's mental suffering is intensified by the revelation which the ghost makes to him. The ghost appeared to him and told him that Claudius, his uncle and the present king and, and, and husband of his mom killed Hamlet by using ponies, poison and putting, uh, putting poison in his ears. We went thoroughly through this scene in our uh, lecture, uh, lectures. Hamlet undergoes even a greater mental suffering till ultimately he dies. Dies as a result of a wound inflicted on him by Lartes Polonius's son in a fencing match. Match. But Hamlet managed to stab the murderer Claudius and at last taken his revenge. This, this revenge is too belated, delayed for several times. And this tendency to procrastinate things, to put things off, to delay things, made the king, who is opportune, who is a shrewd, to take initiative and begin to chase Hamlet. And as a result of this, Hamlet loses his life. Hamlet and the king, yes, so great is the mental suffering of Hamlet. Taban Hamlet got killed, uh, Lertes got killed, the king got killed, his mother got killed, and he himself got killed. Several people got killed, and Polonius got killed. This is a bloody scene on the stage, the most bloody scene. On the state on, 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 in all Shakespearean tragedies. So great is his mental suffering of that that he as you seems to have gone mad. So great is 
the mental suffering of Hamlet. So, followed by an adjective. So, is followed by an adjective. Here, some adverbial clause of result. So great is his mental suffering of Hamlet that that adverbial clause of result. But about so be Diana adjective. So great is his mental suffering of Hamlet that he seems to have gone mad. Take care. Seems some of Hamlet's madness, is particularly in the beginning of the play till, the, till, till its middle, is feigned madness. It's not real madness. A uh, pretension. Hamlet pretended to be mad. He said, I'm going to be to wear an antique disposition. But later on, in some parts of the play, Hamlet is genuinely mad. Indeed, many critics are of the opinion that Hamlet actually goes mad. Yes, I told you, yeah, I, 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 I support this point of view. But at parts, this, this in the final, this, his madness became, has become, or became genuine after the middle of the play. However, having been told early in the play of Hamlet's decision to put on an antic disposition, a mad disposition, mad appearance, we know that Hamlet merely pretends to be mad and that he is not to be regarded, uh, to be regarded as actually mad. I am against this point of view. As I told you before, I am prescribed. I am. I am I subscribe to the idea that Hamlet in the beginning of scenes of the play is not mad. What he puts on his countenance is, so to speak, is feigned madness. But later on, under heavy pressure, he loses, he became insane, mad. But there can be no doubt of the genuine despondency. Despondency here means despair, gloominess that afflicts Hamlet throughout the play and that makes him bitter and cynical in his conversations with the various characters in the play, excepting Horatio. I want you to be prepared to defend your point of view, whether you believe that Hamlet, Hamlet met this is genuine or feigned, but I'll accept any point of view you subscribe to, provided that you give evidence. You give evidence, you support your back or your back up your point of view using evidence from the play. This is very important. I have no predetermined, preconceived judgments concerning the, the, this question, but I want you the only thing I want you is to express, to, to voice your point of view, uh, citing evidence from that play. I'm, I'm elements of melodrama, I am not interested. I am not interested in the middle of drama. Melody, oh yes, melodrama. A defect in the hero's character. What is the defect of a hero's character, with a special, with, namely Hamlet. What is the defect in Hamlet's character? I, in the beginning lecture, I said I used the word hamaratia. What is the tragic weakness in Hamlet's character? Some people, some critics believe that Hamlet doesn't qualify for a tragic hero. يعني لا يحمل مواصفات للتراجيك هيرو. He is not so great a man to be considered a tragic hero. I'm against this point of view. The calamities and sufferings which lead to the final disaster in a Shakespearean tragedy aren't merely sent from above. Only, here merely only. Yani not ordained by, not ordained or human beings by a supernatural power or by providence. Yeah.
No. Providence does play a role, but not a sole role. I said that again. The calamities and sufferings which lead to the final disaster in a Shakespearean tragedy aren't merely sent from above, from, from heaven, from, the, from uh, heaven, nor do they happen by accident. Nor do they help some clear, nor is a badanina jumla, nor see if you inversion. Nor do they happen. The inversion has been done by the amal tertib the kalimat or jumla ila kalimat suar. Nor do they happen by accident. Accident musada. لا تليس تي من الحصريا من providence من fate من doom من fortune. كمان moreover. They aren't, they do not happen by accident. <clears throat> they result, but they result chiefly from the actions and the character of those concerned. We turn to the tragedy, men, sulukat, wa shaksiyat, al ashkhas, al mani. No character alone. We can say that character alone is responsible for the final fate. Not character alone, but character is chiefly responsible for the suffering and the tragedy. The tragedy of Hamlet is, is due mainly to a defect in his own character. What it is, this defect is in his incapacity, inability for a quick decision. He can't take a quick decisions. Normal human beings do can take prompt decisions and this is as a life skill take care a life skill and those who can take can take quick decisions in times of emergency lack a very important uh, life skill hamlet is certainly capable of impulsive action but he is not capable of a plan or a premediated action. مخطط له مسبقا لا يستطيع. أي فعل مخطط له مسبقا نقدر نشوف به. Planned or premediated سبق له أن فكر فيه. The result is that he goes on delaying his revenge till ultimately the initiative is taken by his enemy, namely his uncle against him. مكتشف اللعبة عمه ويقرر التخلص منه. تغدى هاملت قبل ما يتعشى هاملت فيه. هاملت is by nature given to reflection, inclined, given to يعني inclined to reflection and meditation. التأمل والتفكير كثيرا reflective, imaginative. He thinks too much. Too much تعني أكثر من اللازم. Not approve يعني here we do not approve of his thinking. Hamlet, he thinks too much by nature, too much. Although after the ghost has revealed the fact that of Claudius's treachery, Hamlet determines to, to avenge his father's murder. He goes on waiting till it occurs to him that he should verify the truth of what the ghost to told him by making a play, by making a play that parodies the death of Hamlet, his father. I strongly support the, I strongly believe that Hamlet up till now before the play, he was acting normally. He as a reflective person, as a mediative person, as a thoughtful person, as a human being, he needs the ghost. He suspects what the ghost told him. He suspected what the ghost, the ghost told him. So he wants more evidence. And this, I, I believe this is quite natural. I don't decry Hamlet or blame Hamlet for not taking action up till now. But after the play, has after the play, after the play, after the after the subplot or the play. He, uh, he required the actors to perform in front of 
his uncle and his mom in order to test their conscience. استخدموا مصطلح أنا بدي اختبر ضميرهم فبمثل تمثيلية خل الممثلين يعملوا تمثيلية تحاكي موت أبي وقتل أبي وهو ب and he hides and hides behind a play he hides himself and watches their feelings watches their their faces watching their movements in order to make sure that they were really the culprits who were responsible for his father's death. But as a scientific person, as an academic person, as Hamlet was, he couldn't, he couldn't trust the ghost. I, I support him here. I don't feel something strange about this, but I blame him for lack of action after he made sure that that Claudius was 100% responsible for the murder of his father. لا يتخذ المؤمنون الكافرين أولياء من دون المؤمنين ومن يفعل ذلك فليس من الله في شيء فليس من الله في شيء إلا أن تتقوا منهم تقا ويحذركم الله نفسا وإلى الله المصير قل إن تخفوا ما في صدوركم أو تبدوا Hi everybody once more again, we are back. I hope that you have enjoyed this beautiful and impressive recit recitation of parts of the holy book by Islam, by Islam Subhi. I love him much. And I uh, feel that lots of people love him. Now we explore. We explore the element of fate now. We explore the element of character. How Hamlet is incapable at times of taking action, his, his meditative thinking personality tends to postpone things, procrastinate things. Now, for Shakespeare, as you know, that the final calamity of the tragic hero is a pro is a brought about by or caused by two elements the tragic hero the tragic defect the tragic hamaratia and the element of or a superpower and the element of fate the element of doom 
the element of providence. And this fate or providence takes several forms, takes sort of or manifestations. It has been pointed out about that Hamlet that although a defect of character is chiefly responsible for the tragic end of the hero, that defect is not solely or wholly responsible for it. There is another element, two elements which, which join forces. Two elements join forces in order to bring about the final destruction of the tragic hero. Fate or destiny also plays a part in the tragic dramas of Shakespeare. Hamlet, Hamlet the play here, Hamlet the play certainly produces a feeling in us that there is some mysterious power, mysterious, not known to all, power working in this universe and that this power upsets human hopes and the plans and calculations. Uh, you know that um, Shakespeare was a Christian. Shakespeare was a Christian. But Hamlet wasn't. Hamlet, this is a character, was very old, or supposed to be very old. Hamlet certainly produces a feeling in us that there is some mysterious power. Humanity always has been thinking that there is a superpower which is very much above them, which is very much more powerful than themselves and interferes with their lives. In Greek tragedy, it took the form or the venomous, it manifested, this mysterious power manifested itself in the form of gods. In Greek, mytholo in Greek mythology, there are several gods, more than 20 gods. God, one god for wine, the other god for uh, uh, for wine, for uh, harvest, for uh, fire, for uh, water, whatever, several guts, several guts. This is a misconception of, uh, of God. God for Muslims is very merciful, very compassionate. This is not a respectable view of God or a, few, a respectable view of the supernatural the, uh, faith. It seems to me pagan view. The very appearance of the ghost in this play is a situation for which fate is responsible. This is a form of fate. The fact of the late king having been murdered by Claudius is revealed to Hamlet not by a human being, but by a spirit from the other world. The appearance of the ghost therefore arouses a sense of mystery and it creates a feeling that fate is playing a deliberate part in human affairs. Even Muslims believe in this. The ghost imposes a task on Hamlet, the task namely is that he wanted Hamlet to take vengeance on or to revenge his father. The fact that Hamlet is required to perform that task when he is temperamentally. I want you to underline the word temperamentally. Temperamentally. Mizajian, constitutionally. Jibiliyan, yani. And his constitution, wabuniyatu al fikriya, constitutionally incapable of, of it is nothing but man a manifestation of fate. Ha these are the manifestations of fate. Hamlet's constitution and Hamlet's temperament. And the ghost. Shu askal gaddes fi anna al-ghost wa al-hala al-mizajiyya al-hamlet wa ibuniyati al-nafsiyya wa al-psychologiyya kulla the manifestations of fate for some ecritics. Commenting on the task, Hamlet says the task he was entrusted with, namely killing, killing, uh, avenging his father on the culvert, the time is out of joint. Oh, Kurt, spite, spite means fate. 
that ever I was born to set it right. Set what right? Set the cosmic order. But because by the killing of the king, the head of the state, the cosmic order is upset. Here Hamlet feels deeply that he is doomed to set the cosmic, right, the cosmic order right, to right things, to right the state. A man can't write, a man can't write the whole universe. Universe man to Finding Hamlet irresolute, find fate again intervenes. Resolute undetermined. Shabuir, Qadr al Hasm, Mish Hasm, the fate again intervenes. So that Hamlet again sees the ghost. This time in his mother's closet room. And is told by that, by it, that it has come to with thy almost planted purpose. Planted and sharp. Yani to wit yashhad u blant aksa yashhad hadafaka to drive you to do your purpose or to take vengeance. The sense of fate is further de deepened in us by the incident of a pirate vessel attacking the ship by which Hamlet, by which Hamlet is proceeding to England. At a time, Hamlet decided to leave, to leave for England and leave his native country to evade killing his, 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 his uncle, who sent him to England in order to, be, to, to, to get killed to get killed, but a pirate ship, the Malik Ba'at Washan in Gatil for Engeltra, Rah, who are Karar and you better in Mamlakatabatu, put the Liga a pirate ship, Karasina. They, they sent him back to Denmark. Here, this is a form of fate interference. Finally, the sense of fate in this play receives further emphasis by the words of Hamlet in Act 5 when he says that there is divinity, there is divinity providence which shapes a human ends. Always a human beings, always a humanity has had this feeling of a superpower governing their fates, respective fates and human ends, and that there is a providence even in the fall of a sparrow. Sparrow, حتى العصفور لا يسقط ولا يموت إلا بهناك حكمة. Providence, providence, providence. Providence, يعني fate. The element of conflict. What is the conflict? In the beginning lecture, I told you that the essence of, the essence of a tragedy is conflict. Without conflict, there is no tragedy. Conflict is the essence of Ashkenazian tragedy and the Greek tragedy also. Let me add. This Jawhar in Masrahi Shakespeare was Sarah. I will and I added it is also the essence of the Greek tragedy and every tragedy. This conflict is of two types. Outward conflict among the in the mind of the hero, the inner con outward conflict among the various characters, Sara Kharaji, Bain al Batal was Shakti al Ukhra, when our Sarim Nasara inner conflict in the mind of the hero. Both these types of conflict exist side by side in a Shakespearean tragedy. All Shakespearean tragic heroes underwent, underwent an internal conflict in their minds and psychs. In Hamlet the play, here Hamlet the play, Hamlet seeks to avenge his father, father's murder by putting an end to the life of Claudius, while Claudius seeks to get rid of Hamlet. This is the external, external conflict in order to ensure his own security and stability. This is an external uh, conflict. Towards the end of the play, an outward conflict also takes place between Hamlet and Laertes. 
because Blartus seeks to avenge his own father's murder also, because Hamlet killed, uh, killed Polonius' father. Shakespeare's idea of yes, killing Hamlet. The inner conflict takes place in the mind of Hamlet and is revealed to us in Hamlet's successive soliloquies. Almost every soliloquy of Hamlet contains a mental debate, a mental struggle, mental questioning. The most celebrated of these, most famous of these soliloquies is the one that begins to be or not to be, that is the question. This is the question. This is the key note of Hamlet. The play. Masala wujudiya an existential issue. That's the question, which contains perhaps the most agonizing debate in Hamlet's mind. Agonizing, painful. This inner conflict also appears very poignantly. El ja, el gahana, silent, poignantly, hatefully in the soliloquy which begins, how all occasions do, inf do inform against us, how all opportunities, all misfortunes do inform against us, combine against us. In this soliloquy, Hamlet asks himself whether his father, whether, whether his failure to avenge his father's murder is it due to an element of cowardice in his nature. حتى لو كان هذا بكون بكون الآلهة تتحكم في طبيعتنا. He feels greatly distressed by the thought by the thought that he is that he hasn't lived up to his own notion of honor. لم يكن على مستوى فكرة الشرف التي في عقله. Which demanded that he should put an end to the life of his father's murder. The greatness of the hero and its twofold effect. The greatness of Hamlet. Hamlet is a great. Let us see how Hamlet is a great. Is a great. The tragic heroes of Shakespeare are built on a grand scale. A hero in a Shakespearean tragedy has either nobility of mind or strength of character, or both. عقل نبيل أو قوي الشخصي or genus or immense forest which in spite of his defect or flaw excites our imagination and sympathy, arouses our admiration, arouses our sympathy for him. Hamlet is a man of genus and he has these qualities win him our admiration and sympathy the spectator's admiration in spite of his lack of a capacity for a quick action and his tendency to procrastinate tendency inclination inclination the greatness of the hero in Shakespearean tragedy has, has two results. Since the hero is represented as noble and morally great, the effect of the tragedy is never depressing. We feel that man is not meant or is not mean or wretched. Though he may be a victim, حتى لو كان ضحية for suffering. Yeah, and human beings are by their nature great. Tragic heroes are great uh, because they stand for humanity and misfortune. A Shakespearean tragedy doesn't, therefore, leave us leave us cynical or desperate. Such a greatness. <laughs> Such a greatness, perishing and getting this, uh, destroyed, fills us with a sense of waste. 
both these results are to be contradicting results we work with self conflicting results we are left some people believe that the tragedy has a functional has a function to do here human beings are strong human beings in your faith human beings struggle against against supernatural world they are respectable they deserve respect they command our respect so even when they die or when they become a victim they do not they do not uh, represent that or they do not say that they wasted their life at the same time a feeling of waste is aroused in us when we witness that the nobility and the greatness of hamlet come to nothing and when we realize that immense good he could have done to his country under different circumstances this is a mixture feeling this is a mixture feeling development in the in hero's character شخصية متطورة كيف يعني بيتغير in a tragedy the hero normally comes to the realization of a truth of which he had been hitherto unaware يدرك حقيقة كي حقيقة كان يجهلها this is a process for searching for knowledge there is as aristotle says a change from ignorance to knowledge this is a good change but results in a catastrophe this change results in a catastrophe but in greek tragedy this may be little more than the clearing up of a mistaken identity شكسبير في في الجريك تراجيدي كل ما يحدث للبطل التراجيدي انه هي ريفيلز ا مستيكن ايدنتيتي يعني الخطا في التشخيص بس اما في شكسبير بيتعلم تمام not so with the tragedies of shakespeare's maturity In Hamlet, the King Lear, in Hamlet and King Lear, for instance, there is a transformation in the character of the hero. تحول toward the close of the play, قبل نهاية المسرحية. Lear is the opposite of what he had been at the beginning. عكس ما كان في البداية. He has been purged. تم تنقيته. تم تطهيره of his arrogance. And the pride, kibriyai, wata kaburi, wata ali, and the bomb and circumstance of kingship, to which he had attached great importance, are so are to him no more than an interesting spectacle. What matters now is that is the love of the daughter he had rejected in the first place, Cordelia, the Cordelia. Let us concentrate on Hamlet. We have nothing to do with well, King Lear, final four. Hamlet, he is in a state of depression in the beginning of the play. The world to him is very like, is like an unweeded garden. Garden Maliana Bil Ashab Dara from which he would willingly depart. He would like you, he would fain leave it. He has found corruption not only in the state but in existence itself. We soon learn that he hadn't always been so. They said, I'm going to die in the same way. And tells us that he. Had been the ideal Renaissance prince. وكان ممثلا للأمير في عصر النهضة. الأمير المثالي لأمراء عصر النهضة. Soldier, scholar, courtier. Soldier جندي, scholar عالم. كثير بالقطاع بدنا إنه هذا رجل عالم. A knowledgeable person, a university graduate, أو a student. A courtier. 
And th though we catch glimpses of his former self in his conversations with Horatio, his state of depression continues. By the final scene, however, his composure, composure at Tuma'nina, composure, ayya at Tuma'nina ta'ni, at Tuma'nina, has returned. Composure, at Tuma'nina, wa rabatat al jash. He no longer appears in slovenly dress, dress, hudu muscha, la. He apologizes to Lertes because he killed Lertes' father inadvertently, and he th treats Claudius with courtesy, up to the point at which Gertrude's death discloses the king's treasury. Treasury. The hadith ma el maut ummi Gertrude can work by by King Claudius and compels him to the act of vengeance for his mother and for his father. All this is not simply a return to Hamlet for to Hamlet's former self, Nafsul Ula. In the course of the action, he has grown in state, stature and wisdom. Nama fi bakanati wa nama fi hikmatihi. A process of learning, a process of acquiring knowledge. Suffering is teaching, teaches. Suffering teaches a lot. He is no longer troubled by reasoning doubts, for he knows now that reason is not enough and the aql la yakfi. La yakfi. Woman yet yadil. And over reliance on reason and a belief in, in untrammeled free will are. All marks in the in the اعتقاد أو الاعتماد على العقل وعلى الم على المعتقد بأن الإنسان له حرية مطلقة mark of the Shakespeare and villain هذه كلها لا the heroes learn better هذا بتعلم الفيلان لكن heroes learn better هذا اللي بتعلم الفيلان الناس الشخص الوقت لكن the heroes learn better in the beginning of the final scene Hamlet is still beset is still attacked from without and within thou thou wouldst not think how ill all's here about my heart but it's no matter and it doesn't matter because he has now come to put his trust in providence, Iman and Amiq and Billah, or what is called supernatural power. Earlier in the scene, Act Five, Scene Two, which we he had said, our indiscretion sometimes serves us well. Our ignorance, some our serves us as well. يعني يخدمنا جيدا. When our deep plots do fall. And that should learn us, yu'allimuna, teach us. There is a divinity that shapes our ends. Rap to them how we will, in spite of all the things we can do. There isn't, as has been said, a fatalistic surrender. A fatalist, there isn't, as has been said, a fatalistic surrender to of his personal responsibility. ولا يستسلم إلى مسؤول لمسؤولياته إلى مسؤوليات يعني في تلستيك سالندر هو التسليم تسليم الشخص المعت القدري لمسؤوليته. It is the realization that man is not a totally free agent. حتى المسلمين يعتقدون ذلك. With this realization, Hamlet can face. The fencing match and the king's intrigues, schemes, plots, without concern for himself. خلاص أسلم روحه إلى باريه كان مستعد الآن خلاص. What matters at the end of an important tragedy is not success or failure. ما يهم ليس النجاح والفشل. 
but what a man is, man insan. A tragedy of the first order, a tragedy of the Darajal Ula moves into the realm of the human spirit. Tawusufi Ruh al Insan. And at the close, قبل النهاية, we contemplate the future of man. ننظر إلى مستقبل الإنسان في هذا الكون أو في هذه الدولة. In this respect, Shakespeare and the Greeks are the same. الاثنين, Shakespeare resembles the Greek heritage, but they reach the end by wide divergent paths. Thank you. You read for yourself the sense of a moral order.